Mr. Connell, from your point of view, what is the message of Benjamin Britten's War Requiem for today's listener? The message of Britain's War Requiem is si simple and easy. Anti-war, against war, for peace. He was a famous pacifist, and I think his entire life he found ways to express it, but nowhere more than in this uh, masterwork, which is his masterwork, really, I think. From the festival, you have requested three soloists from three different countries. Why is that? Because I would like to reproduce the uh, exact same formula for which Benjamin Britten originally wrote the work, which is to say, a Russian soprano, an English tenor, and a German baritone. So it was at the time, uh, Dietrich Fischer-Disco, the baritone, Peter Pears, of course, the tenor. And it was meant to be for Galina Vishnevskaya, who could not get permission to leave, so the premiere actually took place with an English soprano, Heather Harper, but Galina Vishnevskaya recorded the work with Benjamin Britten. It was premiered on a very special place. Could you tell us where? The Cathedral of Coventry, which was destroyed, of course, in the Second World War. And so the reopening of the cathedral was celebrated with this solemn war requiem. Do you have a favorite page in the score of Benjamin Britten's War Requiem? I love every page. I cannot choose, I cannot choose one for you. I'm sorry. Thank you. Imagine that you will wake up tomorrow morning with unlimited power, unlimited budget. What would you change today in the world of classical music? I would make it possible for every child to come to concerts from the time they are five years old and that every child got classical music uh, instruction or at least uh, the opportunity to hear it all the time in the schools regardless of where they are should be for everyone. Classical music, sometimes they say it's for special people, elite, this is nonsense. Classical music is for everybody, and if I could change that, I would change it to start with children everywhere so that they can hear music and it's a normal part of their life. That's what I would do. Thank you. You have returned to Bratislava after 27 years. Your very first concert with Slovak Philharmonics is dated back into 80s during the times of communism. And you have returned now into totally different society and totally different time. Uh, do you have any interesting observations? Well, naturally it's very different. My uh, visit to Bratislava first time in 1982 was my first experience in the Ostblok. That's uh, for me an unforgettable experience. For me uh, as a young conductor and American, uh, it was very moving, and what has not changed is that the heart and soul of the people here is the same. I loved it then, I loved the experience, the chorus, the orchestra, the audience, everybody I met in 1982, and I have the same feeling today. So even if the political situation has changed, the essential, most important part is the same, and that gives me great joy to, uh, I'm sorry, it's been so many years, but uh, you know, last year the chorus uh, sang with me at the Wiener Staatsoper Hovanchina, uh, 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 and this was, of course, like meeting again. Uh, many members still had were those that sang with me in the 80s, so I was very happy that we met again in Wien and that we organized this now. So. Thank you very much.